How's it going everyone? Um, thank you for watching the Master channel. This is going to be a quick unboxing and install of a flex fuel kit that I got. Uh, ordered it from Texas Speed. It is the SMG flex fuel kit. Um, so let's go ahead and spin around and take a look at the box. Alright, so it comes in this gorgeous packaging. Ship via UPS. I've already opened it up, but I went ahead and put everything back in. Just to of course, it's gonna cause problems. I just got off work. I plumb for a living, so that's what that blue stuff is. I promise you, it did not punch a smoke. All right, so we get stickers. SMG Speed. And then I ordered it from Texas Speed, so we got a Texas Speed sticker right there. It's gonna go on the wall. I thought this was kind of funny. We get a little flex fuel badge. I don't think I could bring myself to put that on my car, but I still think that's kind of neat. And then we get the flex fuel sensor right here. And then, yep, so we got, I, I know where it connects, but I guess it didn't come with instructions, which I'm going to go ahead and figure, I already kind of watched a few videos on it. Quality seems good. I mean, it's just basic GM product, I guess. Harness is right there. I have to figure out where the hell that plugs in. And I know that this white wire right there goes into the ECM and it's got a it's got the little pin out there. So we'll go ahead and um, move over to the car and go ahead and start putting this thing in. Hey guys, all right, so we're gonna go ahead and do the flex fuel install. Um, I am going to connect to this fuel fitting connector right down there. Uh, we're going to be pausing this often because I don't want to one hand of this. Uh, but let me go ahead and disconnect that. Okay, 20 seconds in, issue number one. This is the clip that holds the, uh, it's like a safety clip that helps to hold the two fuel lines together. Um, it just comes right off. Spent minutes trying to fish it out. So when you pull that off, make sure you hold onto it real good. Alright, we're going to go ahead and relieve the fuel pressure on the fuel rail. Over here, there's a little Schrader valve. I'll take that off. Put that someplace safe. And I'm going to relieve all 58 PSI of fuel pressure. For which there really ain't much. Alright. All I'm doing is just pushing that little pin in. And nothing's really coming out, so we don't have any fuel pressure. Car's been set. Fuel will come out when I disconnect that, so I'm going to make sure I have a rag to soak it up. After much fucking about, using this tool, 3 8 was able to wiggle the connector off the little thing down there. So now we'll go ahead, stick the flex fuel sensor on. Alright, so the flex fuel sensor comes with this connector. With that thing that I just did. let's get a zoom on it. With that thing, so I mean, I'm assuming that you unscrew it, push it in, slide that over the tube, and then tighten it down. So maybe that's a safety. I'm hoping that it's push lock right there, but that's the only way that it seems to be able to go on. I shall attempt and report back. Okay, so a little bit of a pain in the ass to press back together. But as anticipated, this presses onto that. The fitting I pointed out previously presses onto the bottom, and then you screw the little safety retainer in just for safety. And then we're going to go ahead and take that safety clip that we took off earlier, if I can find it, and put it back on. Alright, as I said, I can't even see. Need to put this clip back on, and I'm guessing it goes like that. So hard to tell. Would it go upside down? I can't see going upside down working. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. So it has to be on the other way. So we click that on. And then it goes underneath it. Top like that. Okay. I have absolutely no idea how that works in the scientific world, but apparently it does something. Chevy thought enough to put it on every vehicle so it must do something 
let's go ahead and uh, skip over to the wire. Okay, so after a little bit of internet -y research, I found out that the sensor connects into a drawage power from this coil pack. <sighs> well, a coil pack, I don't think it matters. But I connected it into this one. Let's get some light on the subject. Come on, Jesus. Well, connected it into that coil pack right there. Just kind of looped it around. There actually wasn't really much room. Well, I'll neaten it all up in a bit. Now I'm going to go ahead and plug it into that sensor. And then all we have to do is hook up this white wire to the ECM. We'll get to it. Okay, so that portion is done. I kind of don't like the way that's sticking up there. I'm going to try to tuck that in. There we go. I'll tuck down there. Hide that a little bit. There's the flex fuel sensor. I've got the wire just kind of coming over here for right now. We're going to tackle the ECM. I'm going to just Google this real quick, but I believe I have to get this one, not this one, but this one. And I think it's pin 38, but I'm going to double check and check again. All right, to get these connectors off, when we're working on the black one, you got the little latch right here. You pull up on this, you got this little latch right here. You pull up on this red thing, and then there's a little push in thing right there. You push that in. And this thing will lock up, and then you can slide the connector out. Alright, so this is a scary piece of the ass. Pain in the ass, rather. Wow, scary piece of the ass. Basically, this pin right there, that's the one that I put in. That's pin 40. After reviewing video and video and video and video, I figured out that, yep, it's that one. Um, real scary. I ended up pushing out. Hold on a sec. I ended up using a little Allen key, small, to push out. There's a plastic blank. So I used that to push out the plastic blank to clear the room to be able to put the wire in. And then it looks like all the wires on the back of this have... Let me just highlight this. If you look at the metal on this side, they all have an orientation. So I made sure to match the orientation. Um... Just in case that actually made a difference. I don't know if you can see. Wire on the one side. Clip on the other. So that's how we did it. I'm going to go ahead and put this harness back together. And then uh, hope she fires up. <laughs> Getting it all back together seemed to be fairly easy. The ECM harness is just clicked into place. Uh, with that little lever. Reversal of removal. I just went ahead and zip tied the wire up. Just kind of keep it out the way. All in all. As spaghetti as my engine bay is. It doesn't really stand out any. Not that I care if it did. Let's go ahead and dip over to HP tuners. Actually, before we do HP tuners, we're gonna go ahead and check for fuel leaks. Did you know? Seems fine. That noise, that bubbling, that's my scavenger pump. Gurgling oil back into the system. Unfortunately, when I installed it, I put it below the uh, oil level because I'm smart. I'll just cycle that a few times. All right. So all I'm doing right now is I'm just reading my um, reading my um, ECU just for the engine. I'm not bothering with the transmission of the fuel pumps right now. Um, I've done so many logs and tunes and then wrote, wrote tunes but not written them in that I'm really not sure where I'm at. So I'm going to do an as found and any changes I make will be as of today. So we'll go ahead and let this finish reading and we shall make the necessary changes to activate E85. Okay, so a quick overview of what I've done. This isn't the final E85 tune. Um, I'm going to get, I just actually messed with my knock sensors a little bit. Um, there's a guy who I tuned my car at areas where it wouldn't um, pull any time in if there was knock down low. And I didn't like that, so... I'm not sure if that would show up on HP tuners when I was logging. So I just added in 2 degrees total... Time in retard, if, anyway, this is completely off the point, so, hold on a sec. So we went fuel, we have flex fuel, we enabled, set it to sensor, set the comp thresh change to 2%, and then in spark, 
we have let me scroll up spark advance we have flex fuel that was zeroed out on mine it was zeroed out and i think he had figures there i'm leaving this blank right now because i don't want to add any time in. i just want to make sure we can run on flex fuel plus i'm not even running flex fuel right now but it's going to read e10 and that will change my timing tables and we don't want to knock so in the alcohol adder we've just got to save two degrees um and that would be if i was running fully 85 it's only adding two degrees which should be safe uh, my moly composition is 100 percent, so it would add that 100 percent of that two degrees at 80 percent alcohol 75 percent of that so that'd be a degree and a half at 50 percent alcohol so this should be safe numbers um but we'll go ahead and we'll load this in and uh we'll uh, see if we get a reading on the scanner all right First fire up, and we have ethanol percentage 10.2%. So, yeah, fingers crossed that was a success. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really hope that, um, you know, somebody can get something out of this. You know, I always uh, run to YouTube whenever I'm doing something, and um, some people blast through things. You know, there's a, probably a million how to install the 85 stuff on, um, you know, on 5th Gen Camaros out there. I tried to maybe just point out, like, you know, the stuff that gets me, the stuff that's, like, you know, difficult or weird, like the clip just, you know, you expect it to kind of stay attached, but it falls off, things like that. So... Good luck with everything. Um, you know, subscribe. I'm a try. I'm my own cameraman. I'm I'm gonna try and just do more things. I got big things coming up. We're um gonna be installing an Ox fuel pump in a week. I've got the parts. I got uh, about eighty five percent of the parts over there. So we're gonna be, you know, up in the uh, up in the fuel pressure, up in the boost, up in the timing, and uh, getting some better numbers out of this Camaro. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Y'all have a great day.